All right, so today I just wanted to talk about the new NVIDIA RTX cards. I know a lot of people have already talked about it, but I kind of just wanted to sit back in the back seat and just listen to what everyone else had to say, gather some opinions from multiple different perspectives, and come up with a collective opinion that I've come up with over the last week or so since it was announced last Monday. So let's talk about these RTX cards. We'll talk about pricing and just what these cards are meant for, marketed for, and just really what we should be expecting and what we shouldn't be expecting. And it's all its vagueness. I don't know. It's kind of hard to talk about, but let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is JD from JD Tech here. Welcome back to the channel. We discuss PC passion, mods, guides, reviews, and more. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. All right, so RTX 2070, the 80, and the 80 Ti were all released for pre-order and uh, with massive uh, price bumps, at least with the 80 Ti, uh, over $1,000. Now, their MSRP is, you know, $1,000. Uh, $700 and $500 respectively, the MSRP is usually never the same as what the asking or retail price is. So I kind of take those with a grain of salt. Now, yes, we didn't really get any benchmarks. We didn't get any sort of real world performance that we can really apply to what we already know. And uh, there's just a lot of, uh, you know, ambiguous details left out from that press conference for maybe specific reasons. I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to boost the sales. Um, I, I could be wrong, but most likely um, from a marketing standpoint. But what are these cards really meant for? There's GTX and RTX. And I really don't think we should be comparing these two cards because RTX versus GTX are two separate brands of NVIDIA. RTX is ray tracing technology or at least aimed in that direction, whereas GTX is more for FPS and resolution, right? So we might have different settings in some of our games now supporting ray tracing and uh, that new anti-aliasing that's in the early developmental stages. Now, the direction of gaming has always been towards making it look more real, making it look better. I mean, we can see from games from the 80s versus now, there's been a massive leap in textures, shadows, light, and everything that we've seen that makes it all the more realistic looking when it comes to games in the present modern day so that is important to um, know and realize because these cards are pushing towards that direction but at the same time it's not really meant for gaming I don't know it could be um, like I said there's just a lot of vague information that we just don't know about sure we have a couple of benchmarks that are also vague as well but to really brand these cards for gaming is kind of hard to do because RTX and GTX it's like having two separate cars it's like you have you have a drag strip car and then you have like a Formula One car that goes around turns and stuff like that while one just goes in a straight line. They're, they both race, but they race differently and they'll beat each other in their own selective races. But, uh, you know, that's that's really not a good comparison. Now, the main thing to realize here is that I believe these RTX cards will be pretty impressive. I think they will in compu technology and uh, deep learning and AI and all that but with gaming applications tacked onto it so they can sell it to gamers and brand it for gamers and stuff like that. But whether or not this is solely and strictly for gaming is uh, is beyond me. I, I, I personally don't think it is, just from the demonstration, knowing uh, you know how there's shaders and shapes and how light interacts with these things goes beyond the scope of just gaming. There's, there's a whole bunch of applications that use all that sort of technology not just for playing video games. And, and that's the thing to really realize. So am I saying these prices are justified or unjustified? I really can't say either because I don't know what the car is for. I don't know what kind of performance it has. And there's just, I don't think we should be formulating any sort of opinions about it just yet saying, oh, well, it only played, you know, 40 to 50 FPS with the ray tracing technology on, is that gonna matter? Uh, yeah, it will for people that are traditional gamers that just want their FPS versus uh, gamers that want that high level detail. I'm kinda in the middle between both of those. Um, so yeah, of course that matters. Of course you can turn ray tracing technology off and then we'll get more of an apples to apples comparison to FPS and resolution and also that new anti-aliasing, uh, whether what that means versus, you know, having a 1080 Ti versus a 2080 Ti. But we need to put these things on a level playing ground and doing that, I just don't think these cards are meant to be put on a level playing ground. 
Uh, there might be like an 11 series coming out. Uh, there probably isn't, but if this is just for gaming, I don't think it will be. Um, so it's hard to really formulate any sort of strong opinion about these new RTX cards and their price and their performance from what we've seen already because we just don't know what these cards are built for and capable of because it's a brand new technology and direction from NVIDIA. I don't think NVIDIA is trying to rip us off and I really hope they don't but they could be. It could be a massive marketing bluff but I don't know and a lot of other people don't know so that's my overall conclusion. We don't know. The, the real thing to take away from this is I wouldn't really formulate any sort of opinions about, you know, what we have versus the RTX versus GTX cards. Maybe it's maybe it's still good to have your 10 series cards and you'll still be able to. We just don't know. So there's a lot of vague details being left out, like I've mentioned already. But I think that's the main basis to really realize what these cards are meant for. I think they have mass potential in certain areas of compute technology. How that applies to gaming and how it affects it, I don't know. So there's an impressive side to it and there's a vague side to it. And that's what we need to realize. So those prices... I have no idea if it's worth it or not. I'm not going to say it is or isn't. So that's how I'm going to leave it. And I think that's how everyone should look at these RTX cards until they're reviewed by people. And that's really why I want to review one of them because they have a massive interest for me. Sure, you know, gaming is great and all, but seeing that something is pushing a new direction that can be leveraged by other applications, including gaming, is making a very... Uh, versatile card so i don't know it could be like that could not be so that's all i can really say so i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video hopefully it made sense hopefully it clears up things and offers a pretty unbiased perspective because i don't really have a bias towards whatever these cards can turn out to be if you want to help support the channel i have a patreon link down below i also sell merchandise like this and also these pieces over here of pc art so that'll be linked in the card over here thank you all for watching guys if you're new here, consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.